Hi, welcome back to the Ants Subon YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to do something different. I am thinking of doing a different video segment by watching Ants in the Wild. It will be something new compared to how my previous videos are made. There are people who are into bird watching, so let us go ant watching. It's a simple day out, nothing out of the ordinary like trailblazing. Hopefully, we can see ant species we don't get to encounter every day, and who knows, we might stumble upon something we haven't seen before. I used to go hiking whenever I could, but since the coronavirus outbreak that lasted two years, I took a break from all of that. Now, there is an opportunity. I want to seize the day and absorb all the information Mother Nature has to offer. The first ant species I encountered was a polygen multi-queen species from the Myrmicaria genus. This is the Myrmicaria brunnia species. I know this is brunnia because I used to keep this species, but unfortunately, the colony mysteriously died. The workers have a black gaster and a red thorax, making them easy to identify from the other Myrmicaria species. They make their nest in the ground in the shape of a funnel. You won't get to see this species near any dense human population areas. They only live close to the forest and at a somewhat higher elevation. When you disturb them, they will release formic acid without hesitation. If you look at my older videos, the queen is very large and her head and thorax are red while her gaster is glossy black. They can also be easily identified by their hunched tail posture. They are tough ant species and can adapt well to harsh cold and wet environments. They are aggressive and territorial, and they sting too. Based on my previous experience, due to its slow reproduction, it takes a lot of patience to start a colony from a queen, so keeping it from the beginning is more recommended for more experienced keepers. The following ant spotted is also from the Myrmicaria species. It is called Myrmicaria carinata. The workers are slightly larger and their colors are much lighter than brown to orange. Their gaster are not all black like the Myrmicaria brunnia workers. They are ground and tree dwelling ants. Myrmicaria carinata is not the most common pet. In fact, I haven't seen anyone keeping this species as compared to Myrmicaria brunnia. I find this species rather friendlier, fast and agile. Another thing I forgot to mention is that if you keep Myrmicaria in a substrate setup, they will build wild designs for their nest entrances and build covered tunnels against your nest walls. I remember that feeding them was always easy. They love insect feeders and like all young colonies, they are very timid. With an increase in numbers, appetite and aggression grow. They seem to be always in a hungry mode, so do prepare other energy-boosting foods like fruits. At the time of hiking, the temperature is around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. They feel comfortable in this temperature range, and we should keep in mind that this species loves moisture. Myrmicaria species are really interesting to keep. I just wish I could get a chance to find this queen again and start all over. The next end genus is Technomermex. I spotted this bunch under a rest stop hut. If you notice, their feet are white, hence the other given name is white-footed ants. I believe this species is called Technomermex albibes, the most common species in its genus. They are feasting on a giant poop left over fresh by a gecko. I am very fascinated by this species, especially their ability to replace the queen with a fertile female on the spot if the queen dies. That is why this species is extremely invasive and has colonized most of the world. I have read somewhere that the entire colony can be made up of fertile females. This species will have females that lay non-fertile eggs used as food, so they don't have to rely on searching for a suitable habitat to start their colony. They can basically start a colony inside your bedroom. The workers are about 3 mm to 4 mm in length, with a black body and white feet. They do not bite or sting, these ants are attracted to sweet substances, and are most certainly the first species to appear when food is located.
The next ant I found is a rare one. This is a Diacama genus from the Ponorhini family. It is most likely Diacama magdalene, a species you will not get to see in the suburbs. I had encountered this species before, a long time ago. You can easily identify it by the deep groove lines on its body, which resemble our fingerprints. The legs are brownish, and it is relatively large for a worker, it measured about 12 millimeters in length. You do not want to get stung by this size of worker. They are called Asian bullet ants for a reason. They have an elongated stinger. Another cool thing about Diacama magdalene is that it was only recently identified as a new ant species, and it is only right for it to be named after its well-known founder. The following is a diacama that everyone is familiar with, a species with a fearsome reputation, the diacama rugosum. This species is widely distributed in the Southeast Asia region. They are very beautiful under the sun, with a golden to silverish shin on them and black stripes on the gaster. My colony has been with me for more than two years now. This is the oldest diacama colony I have because I was able to extend their continuation by introducing a few male alates from another colony. But unfortunately, that 100 worker strong colony that produced the male alates has died off without being able to successfully produce the next gamergate. This means 50 or so workers now have to get stronger and produce alates of their own. Their gamergate lifespan is very short, about 10 to 12 months. Hopefully, I will be able to get another colony by then. I will probably feature an update video for you guys. What you are seeing here is that the Diacama rugosum is trying to steal this piece of dried up sweet sap dripped from a nearby gum tree. The ant species that the rugosum is wreaking havoc on is Tetramorium species. This tiny species of ant is from the Myrmicinae genus. They have a unique adaptation which enables them to prevent themselves from being sliced in half by bigger ants such as this diacama. By having a hard body armor, they somehow are able to resist the bite force of a diacama. Isn't that cool? Tetramorium species tends to establish its colonies near bigger and more dangerous ant species. This somewhat gives them extra protection from other dangerous insects that might want to eat them. As you can tell, they are not giving up the sap, even if it means getting bitten. I hope you liked this video and I enjoyed making it. I like watching ants in their natural habitat doing what comes naturally to them. Sometimes I use clips of them in some of my video introductions, if you haven't noticed. So I thought it would be a great idea to combine them and make a new segment on my YouTube channel. There will be more to come for this segment, and I can improve my video capturing every time I do this. It is all for now, till next week. Thanks for watching and Subong.